now we're going to talk about the James Webb Telescope. So I've talked about this a few times, but it turns out they actually have a date where it is going into space. James Webb, it's scheduled to head to space on December 18th, 2021. And there it is right there, the James Webb Telescope. It's the biggest orbital telescope ever built. And finally, it will be sent to space. Now, this thing was supposed to be sent into space back in 2015. So it's been a while. It's long overdue. And the Hubble has been going strong. It's We're still getting stuff from the Hubble. Well, after a little computer mishap, now it's back up and running since 1990. That's right. It's almost as old as I am. Crazy. 31 years old, the Hubble's telescope is. And there's actually a lot of telescopes uh, in space, but I'm going to talk about that in a second. Let's see. So Marcia Reich, Regents Professor of Astronomy at University of Arizona, writes, The James Webb Telescope is scheduled to head to space December 18th, 2021. With it, astronomers hope to find the first galaxies to form in the universe. We'll search for Earth-like atmospheres around other planets and accomplish many other scientific goals. I am an astronomer and principal investigator of the Near Infrared Camera, or NIRCAM for short, aboard the Webb Telescope. I have participated in the development and testing for both my camera and the telescope as a whole. To see deep into the universe, the telescope has a very large mirror and must be kept extremely cold. But getting a fragile piece of equipment like this to space is no simple task, as I had imagined. There have been many challenges my colleagues and I have overcome to design test and soon launch and align the most powerful space telescope ever built look at that thing it is beautiful and this is slightly disassembled here it's very cool uh, the web telescope has a mirror over 20 feet across a tennis court sized sunshade to block solar radiation and four separate camera and sensor systems to collect the data it works kind of like a satellite dish Light from the star or galaxy will enter the mouth of the telescope and bounce off the primary mirror towards the four sensor. NIRCAM, which takes images in near-infrared, the near-infrared spect uh, spectrograph, which can split the light from a selection of sources into their constituent colors and measures the strength of each. The mid-infrared in instrument, which takes images and measures m wavelengths in the mid, uh, excuse me, middle infrared and the near infrared imaging slitless spectrograph which splits and measures the lights of anything scientists point the satellite at the design will also allow scientists to study how stars form in the milky way and the atmospheres of planets outside the solar system it may even be possible to figure out the composition of these atmospheres in which case if we see an earth-like planet we'll be able to actually tell what the composition of the atmosphere of that said planet would be. Is it rich in oxygen and carbon dioxide that we could potentially live on and breathe, get there and take our helmets off like countless different um, space movies in the past? Very exciting stuff. Ever since Edwin Hubble proved that distant galaxies are just like the Milky Way, astronomers have asked, how old are the oldest galaxies? How did they first form? And how have they changed over time? The Webb Telescope was originally dubbed the first light machine because it was designed to answer these very questions. One of the main goals of the telescope is to study distant galaxies close to the edge of the observable universe. It takes billions of years for the light from these galaxies to cross the universe and reach Earth. I estimate that images my colleagues and I will collect with NIRCAM could show proto-galaxies that formed mere 300 million years after the Big Bang, when they were just 2% of their current age. Finding the first aggressions of stars that formed after the Big Bang is a daunting task for a simple reason. These proto-galaxies are very far away and so appear to be very faint. Mirrors, uh, Webb's mirror is made of 18 separate segments and can collect more than six times as much light as the Hubble Space Telescope mirror. Six times! It's amazing. Distant objects also appear to be very small, so the telescope must be able to focus the light as tightly as possible. The telescope also uh, has to cope with other, uh, another complication. 
Since the universe is expanding, the galaxies that the scientists will study with the Webb telescope are moving away from Earth, and the Doppler effect comes into play. Just like the pitch of an ambulance siren shifts down and becomes deeper when it passes and starts moving away from you, the wavelength of light from distant galaxies shifts down from the visible light to infrared light. Webb detects infrared light. It is essentially a, a giant heat telescope. To see faint galaxies in infrared light, the telescope needs to be exceptionally cold, or else all it would see would be its own infrared radiation. This is where the heat shield comes in. The shield is made of thin plastic coated with aluminum. It is five layers thick and measures 46 feet by 69 feet. Nice. And will keep the mirror and sensors at minus 390 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. The Webb telescope is an incredible feat of engineering. But how does one get such a thing to space and guarantee it will work? Well, first, test and rehearse. The James Webb telescope will orbit a million miles from Earth, about 4,500 times more distance than the International Space Station, and much too far to be serviced by astronauts. Over the past 12 years, the team has tested the telescope and instruments, shaking them to simulate the rocket launch, and tested them again. Everything has been cooled and tested under extreme operation uh, conditions of orbit, I will never forget when my team was in Houston testing the NIRCAM using a chamber designed for the Apollo lunar rover. It was the first time my camera detected light that had bounced off a telescope's mirror, and we couldn't have been happier, even though Hurricane Harvey was fighting us outside. After testing came the rehearsals. The telescope will be controlled remotely by commands sent over a radio link. But because the telescope will be so far away, it takes six seconds for a signal to go one way. There's no real-time control. So for the past three years, my team and I have been going to the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore and running rehearsal missions on the simulator covering everything from launch to routine science operations. The team even has practiced dealing with potential problems that the test organizers throw at us and cutely call anomalies. The web team will continue to rehearse and practice until launch date on December, but our work is far from done after web is folded and loaded into the rocket. We need to wait 35 days after the launch for the parts to cool before beginning alignment. After the mirror unfolds, NIRCAM will snap sequences of high-resolution images of the individual mirror segments. The telescope team will analyze the images to tell motors to adjust the segments in steps measured in a billionth of a meter. A billionth of, an, of a meter. Once the motors move the mirrors into position, we will confirm the telescope alignment is perfect. This task is so mission critical that there are two identical copies of NIRCAM on board. If one fails, the other can take over the alignment job. This alignment with a checkout process should take six months. When finished, Webb will begin collecting data. After 20 years of work, Astronomers will at last have a telescope able to peer into the farthest, most distant recent reaches of the universe. That is awesome. I cannot wait to see what this telescope is going to show us. It is going to be able to see across the universe, the known universe, right? We are going to see images like never before. We thought the Hubble images were amazing. This thing is going to be seeing galaxies that were around since nearly the beginning of our universe it's amazing i can't wait there's actually a lot of new telescopes coming here's a list check us out we've got xpe the james webb telescopes coming the x-ray uh, polar polarama uh, polarimeter satellite x-ray imaging and spectrometry mission uh, International Lu Lunar Observatory. That one's really cool. I'm kind of excited about that. Euclid. Look at all these. These are all scheduled over the next 15 year or 13 years. Very cool. And this is actually a long list of ones that are actually current right now. We have a lot of them. Here, these are all up in space right now. Astrostat, Transitioning Exoplanet Survey Satellite. These are all... Not all of them. Some of them are, are no longer here. The Swift Gamma Burst Ray Burst Explorer. So check us out. This 
kind of pertains to it. I don't know what took this picture. Probably Hubble, if you had to ask. It probably is. So I, I saw this today and I thought it was hilarious. The IAU has discontinued the name Clown Face Nebula as it was seen as too offensive. <laughs> it's a beautiful nebula. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. I love this thing. Look, it's, it's amazing. And I, I just... I don't understand who's it offensive to it looks like a clown face it looks like it's got the whole fringe thing and it's all colorful and it kind of looks like it's got a smile look it's it's got a smile there you see it it's got like a smile it looks like it's got one big it's like a cyclops clown face or something but anyway it's too offensive huh you know what they named it you know what its name is now Eskimo Nebula Eskimo Nebula. I mean, clown face worked for me. So does Eskimo. Like, whatever. How long do you think it's going to be until they change it again? The Eskimo. Because, oh my goodness. We can't have anything being represented by any sort of minority. Right? I mean, look at Uncle Ben's rice. Aunt Jemima. Sure, Mr. Clean is still around. But no minorities can, can be used as products because reasons I, I mean for me uncle ben's was always really good rice and aunt jemima was like a pleasant looking woman that had a nice smile i don't really like uh artificial syrup i like real maple syrup but if i were to grab some syrup it, you know it'd be aunt jemima why not what we're not allowed to look at these people excuse me look at these people and i don't know connect with them hmm? no no Someone out there somewhere will be offended. I am sick of it. Anyway, I hope that the James Webb Telescope will bring us some amazing images, and I cannot wait to see it.